Jazz Tanke, Artisans Editor for Variety and your host for today's Half Hour with The Undoing. With us today, we have Susanna Beer, Director and Executive Producer, actor Hugh Grant, Production Designer Lester Cohn and Costume Designer Scene Silent. Now, before we start and dive into this conversation that I know you're all really excited to hear, um, let's take a look at the trailer from the show and then we'll dive right on in. The whole world thinks I did this. I had an affair, but I didn't kill her. Was my husband the only person to enter that apartment that night? You need to stay away from my wife. Why do you stay away from mine? Whatever secret you have, it's my business. Everyone assumes they know their own family. But I can assure you that's not the case. Congratulations on the show. It is the most talked about TV show of the year. Hugh, let's start with you. I mean, coming into the show, did you know, and I'm sorry to spoil it, but did you know that Jonathan was guilty or innocent before you took part? And how did you find out that he had done it? Oh, yeah. No, I, I needed to know he was guilty. Uh, I, I mean, it was a very prestigious and, and classy offer for which I was very grateful anyway. I mean, look, Susanna Beer, you know, she's a proper film director and uh, brilliant. And, and, you know, Nicole Kidman, David E. Kelly, all that. But it would have been considerably less interesting if I'd just been unfaithful husband who spent six episodes apologizing and then was innocent of murder. So I, yeah, although I was only given one episode to start with, I did check that I was definitely a narcissistic sociopath and then it was then it was a definite yes <laughs> actually 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 we had a fun conversation because at some point because david kept writing the scripts while we were shooting and at some point you know i think he sort of softly entertained the idea that maybe somebody else would be guilty and Hugh and I had it, we had like a weekend of, of turmoil, right? Because we, we kept kind of talking about it and, and, and it was like, no, there's no way. Uh, um, and we, I think we were both adamant that it wasn't going to happen, but there was a certain flirtation with the notion. I, I think there was. Someone else, yeah. And also- that, That's who, why I was so pleased. I was so pleased when, uh, Susanna said, well, I'm going to film the, the murder, which was never in the script. And because uh, once it's in there, once it's in the can, uh, it's very difficult for anyone else to be guilty when you've actually seen me hammering away. Yeah, but I just did that for you not to freak out. I did wonder that. <laughs> I only shot it so that, so that you I mean, wouldn't be. It's possible. It's possible. She jokes, but it may be true. Because I had a big tantrum. I, I said, I only, I'm only in this to be a killer. I don't want to be Mr. <laughs> okay, whilst, you're talk whilst we're talking about, about it, Hugh, I mean, you know, you've got, you've transitioned from being the romantic leading man, you know, of the, you know, the 90s to, to being the villain in Paddington to now being a murderer. I mean, what was it about this role that stood out for you? It's extremely rare to find uh, a script where I actually want to turn the pages. I, I'm so old and bored and unpleasant now. I've, I've fallen asleep on page six of almost every script. But this one, I, you know, I was loving it, just like people have loved watching the series. So that was a huge plus. I'm also extremely snobby about cinema uh, versus television. So television makes me wrinkle my nose a bit. But when I knew it was going to be shot as a film by a really great European film director with a great America, oh, Australian film star. I thought, oh, and, you know, subsequently, uh, Don Sutherland. Uh, I, it, it ticked all the boxes for me. And then it is very fascinating to be such a duplicitous person who uh, appears to be one thing, but is in fact another. And I also thought this is, this is a possible I'm in a very comfortable position here because if any scene that Jonathan does where he's less than convincing because of my bad acting, I can always put it down to the fact that, well, he is acting and, he, and he's not an actor, he's a doctor. <laughs> it, was, it was a get out of jail free card. 
Leicester and seen let I mean the world of New York, the world of Franklin, the Fraser family home. Talk about bringing the the collaboration that you had with Susanna and bringing this world to life through the sets and through the costume design. Lester, do you want to start? Something I, as a New Yorker, what I'm most, what I was fascinated about, which I thought we sort of uh, did was like how, you know, on Fifth Avenue, you can be living up in the clouds and, you know, like above it all and just a few blocks away where the Alves family lives, which is literally just a 10 block walk. It's a completely different world. And, you know, I love the way, you know, you see films about one world or the other, you rarely see something where those worlds collide. Steen, talk about the, the way, the collaboration that you had with Susanna and the look that you wanted to create. And we'll talk, let's, talk, let's also talk about the iconic green coat was worn by Nicole Kidman. <laughs> well, it's not the first time Susanna and I worked together. We've done that a few times. And um, I would say it's getting more and more exciting every time. And uh, we kind of uh, have a common uh, uh, idea of where, what it should look like and um, not, even, not even have it set too much to one another. We kind of know what we want to do. Uh, and I will say, Maybe it's the show is also it looks interesting and um, the costumes, maybe because it's I as a Danish person who never lived in New York, who just know New York very little, sees New York with my eyes. And what about that green coat? Um, the coat, I think, you know, Nicole has said in an interview that it was almost like a blanket mm. security mm. Um, item for her. So talk mm. about finding that coat I mean, and the discussions you had yeah but grace she's such a private person uh, and uh, so she i mean who apparently likes to walk <laughs> in new york so she needed she needed a, a, a coat where she could so she could disappear uh, and uh, i wanted her to to blend in and stick out at the same time and I wanted to make a coat that was very cinematic and almost out of time and could feel a little like if it came from a fairy tale or something like that. Yeah. And Susanna, you mentioned that you had, you know, you directed The Night Manager all, you know, every single episode and you've done it again for, for this. Um, you know, was it easier this time to, to direct every single episode or... What did you learn from that? Obviously, there are certain things that you where you have experience and you kind of know if you do this, this and this can happen. But I think in a way that I guess I'm I'm always trying to to kind of put myself in a precautious position somehow. And um, and that doesn't actually get easier in a way. The pressure almost gets worse, I think, in a funny way. Um, but but New York being a character on its own here helped a lot. I think it was a very important element of the whole of the whole, particularly on the whole visual take on the series. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's. I mean, I know it's a cliche. People always say that New York is a character, but I think what's interesting about New York is people live in particular neighborhoods, and as sophisticated as they are, and as much as they go to museums and to the theater and they travel the world, it's also very provincial. So the Upper East Side is sort of a world unto itself, which is completely different from the other side of the park. So when, you know, the, there's that scene when, when uh, she goes uh, with her friend to the diner, they, you know, I picked the diner on the, on the West Side. It's not really that far physically, but they know when they're sitting in that diner having that conversation, no one they know will be in that, in that, Thing. Well, first of all, what a brilliant, un unbelievable job you did. And I, you know, we never get to meet designers much, actors. It was at the wrong end of the time process. So, you know, what a genius you are. But I have one qu very important question. Why was our bed so small? 
<laughs> you know, I asked myself that question too. So let's hear the answer, Lester. Yeah. Well, there's two reasons. One was we had this amazing <laughs> wallpaper that was this hand, you know, printed, painted wallpaper, and um, it had this gold tone in it. And I was trying to find a bed that worked harmoniously with this, with that. So we found this bed that was made by some uh, craftsman in Brooklyn. But I also think it does. You know, you guys were very much in love. So I think you know, in the beginning of a marriage. You know, you don't mind, or when you're in love, you don't mind being like, you know, with your partner. And it's only as you get older where you're like, ugh, you know, <laughs> sort of like need a bigger bed and get further away. But I, I feel like I wanted it to feel like you guys were still in that other mode, you know? Yeah, no, I buy that. Yeah. You, you, need, you need to moderate more <laughs> Q and A's for this. But I went back and I rewatched the, the series. Um, I was just trying to find a moment where we see Jonathan be his true self and I couldn't really find it. Like, was there a moment, Suzanne, I don't know if you want to add to that too, but like, yeah, was there a moment where we do see Jonathan be his true self? I mean, when I go <laughs> around and, and, and have sex with her and then have a horrible fight and then kill her, that's pretty much pure Jonathan. It's definitely... I would say a, a couple of other close-ups. Maybe yeah. uh, there's one in the courtroom after I realize that Grace has screwed us. And there's one right at the end when I'm staring at the helicopter. Uh, they're probably pretty much pure Jonathan. Um, because we, to a point, see Jonathan with Grace's eyes. And which is also, which is also the whole conceit of the series. The series, the conceit of the series that the audience are having the exact same experience as Grazer's. They are also hopefully being seduced by Jonathan. They're also hopefully being convinced that in spite of his bad behavior, deep down, he's actually a decent human being. Yeah. Until that point, which is sort of, which happens gradually where we are now that, that we can't really there's no more measures to convince ourselves that he's actually innocent. How did you portray Jonathan's character and those traits through costume design? I mean, you wouldn't expect that nice guy from Notting Hill to do such a thing, right? So <laughs> we ended up we ended up in nice suits and blue shirts, but we did also go other ways, actually. It was it was kind of obvious what Hugh should wear. I think he's just like he's guy you want to be married to. He's a doctor and he's just fun and smart and charming and everything. So so it was pretty easy actually. And then that the whole sequence below the trial, you wear a suit. And I mean it's kind of I did give him a coat too, actually. A few coats. <laughs> Let's talk about that car sequence with Jonathan and Henry and, you know, I mean, that everybody was on the edge of their seat. Um, and I know there was some improvisation done, like talk about the collaborations that you had and conversations that you had with Susanna about Jonathan's undoing. Well, certainly I, when I, I, there were many versions of uh, episode six and when I read this one, which involved the car uh, sequence, I was extremely nervous. When, when a character starts to become unhinged, you think, well, I mean, you might get away with it, but you might also have terrible egg on your face, you know, if you go too far or it looks absurd. So I, you know, I, I live in a perpetual state of terror anyway with acting, but this was quadruple <laughs> terror. And so there was a lot of to and fro with poor old Susanna and, uh, I don't know. I, I think it was a bit of improvisation too. The, the song, that whole song bit is improvised. And I, you know, the kiddie song. But really what makes the scene work, in my opinion, is Susanna's decision to intercut it with a brutal murder. Uh, that's, that's joyous. <laughs> well, you know, I think, I think it was extremely fun and I know it was painful for you Hugh but it was extremely fun that sort of fine line of madness and 
and still be Jonathan. Because I think I think where it goes astray often is that it kind of it kind of venture into almost being another human being or or yeah. like in those kind of mad kind of you kind of go whoa I don't I don't connect the dots, but here you do connect the dots because there is that and I think that sort of sense of still wanting to be a great dad is so insanely absurd for all of us but seems so oddly sensible for Jonathan. Well, that's right. And in a sense, what I realized was that the circumstance does most of the loony work for you. You didn't have to act it because he's just about to be found guilty in this incredibly well-publicized trial. And uh, so to go for a drive to get fried clams is crazy enough. You don't have to act crazy. You just have to talk about fried clams and uh, let's have a day trip. And you look like a total nutbag. And also, and also, and also, actually, Henry asks you uh, or tells you you murdered a person, yeah. and and you kind of yeah, well, no, I mean, actually, I didn't do it, but right, <laughs> the real me, yeah. <laughs> Lester, I have to ask you, where did you find a piano that is in Franklin's living room, dining room? Oh, uh, that comes from a private collection in uh, in Connecticut. Somebody, it, you know, it's somebody from someone's home. It's gorgeous, right? It's it's gorgeous, and it's a character. Oh, oh, I, excuse me, Jazz. I'm asking the questions here. How much? Sorry, I'm sorry, Hugh. Sorry. How, how much uh, did you? How did how did you decorate entirely that apartment of Franklin's, or is part of that how it was? owned by uh, Sir Howard Stringer, and he moved out right before we moved in. So we decorated that place. In the script, there was no piano. And there was also no chessboard. Lester put those things in because he was so kind of visionary about what was going to be on the set. Mm -hmm. So Lester put those things in there and, and what happens, which is quite interesting, what happens with, with, and that happens with costumes and that happens with great set design, is that if, if those things are thought in the right way, as they clearly were, and Lester clearly thought about it in, in a very brilliant way, it becomes part of the scene. Because, the, you know, this, the, you know um, um, Franklin was never meant to play the piano, but be, because the piano was there, it became an integral part of his his uh, character, and then part of the score. I mean, that bit where you yeah. play the Schubert and it and it overlaps the whole yeah. sequence is my favorite in the whole film. Yeah. yeah. What has it been like to see the reaction? Like everybody on social media had an opinion about who did it for six weeks, um, you know, and you know every character was a suspect. But as you know, you were part of the show, you knew who did it for this whole time. So what was it like seeing us start with you? Well, then you knew that you were a part of a really good show, right? And, and the thing is that the most annoying thing is that everybody tried to make me reveal who did it. And uh, I didn't at any point, which was like super annoying. Uh, especially for my husband, who was getting, getting crazy. That was very yeah. good of you, Tina. I know. Yeah. Yeah. What was I it like for you? I had the same experience with my wife. Like, I wouldn't tell her. I, didn't, I wouldn't tell her, and she would, you know, beat, literally beat on me to try to get the answer. And <laughs> um, she was very angry for weeks. <laughs> and people were betting, like, people were betting yeah. who, who did it which is kind of <laughs> crazy <Yeah>. interesting <laughs> yeah. Hugh I'm sure everybody wanted to know from you who did it yeah I, I couldn't go for a run in Hyde Park without people shouting did you do it <laughs> <laughs> and what did you say I told everyone I did but I'm so charming no one believed me <laughs> And Susanna, I didn't tell anybody. I I I had a I had a big semi fallout with my ninety year old dad because he was like, "You have to tell me." 
<laughs> um, you know my favorite yeah. theory i read quite a lot of theories on twitter my favorite one was that that my mum had done it the lady who appears <laughs> for one scene on on facetime so she she'd, flown in, she'd flown in secretly and killed eleanor yeah but you see that could have worked as you know, if you think about it, it could have worked. It's not. Of course, she's ruining impossible. our marriage. My mother wants our marriage to work. She's love it. Clearly got uh, issues. That whole thing with English grammar. She's she's not <laughs> entirely sane. Works very well. <laughs> well, there you go. Now I'm going to rewatch it and watch it with her as the Carefully possible buddy. suspect. <laughs> but for people who haven't seen the show yet and now they know who the murderer is, what's the one thing? that you'd want to say to them to drop everything and start watching The Undoing. Susanna? Well, I want to say that I now know quite a few people who've actually seen it twice and, and who are having a lot of fun with tracing everything. Um, and so I think that's a kind of quite an interesting watch, actually. Yeah. And, um, and I want to say Hugh's performance doesn't get any less interesting once you know. Almost gets more interesting. Lester? Because there is, subtle, there is a very, very subtle ambiguity. Um, it's not, it's very discreet, but it's there. Even if they know or if they're going for a second time, I just think that everyone involved from Susanna on down, all the acting, uh, the cinematography, the costume design. I mean, I just thought it's so beautifully crafted, you know, as, as, a, as a filmmaker, I, you know, you, you sort of like, I try to watch the craft until the story takes me away, you know? And, and in this, the story, even though I knew everything that was gonna happen, it did take me away when I watched it um, the first time, but, you know, it's just beautifully made. It's a beautifully made, made piece. Um, and it was, yeah, so I would say just for that, for nothing else, just do watch it for that. You can see. Yeah, I, I agree with Lister, of course. <laughs> it is, it is really beautiful. <laughs> and, but it's, and it's, uh, basically it's everything because it's, uh, it's fun, it's charming, it's scary, it's, uh, it's breathtaking it's kind of there's so many good things about it that's basically i think it has everything and see yeah. you should just say that we should wash it for the green coat <laughs> <laughs> okay you ask me again and that's what i'm gonna answer no, <laughs> no. well I'm, i mean i don't think it's just a question of watching it a second time i i want it to become cult like, and have screenings like The Sound of Music has screenings now where people come as the characters and, mm. uh, you know, they dress up as Maria von Trapp or a nun or the Mother Superior or whatever. I think in 10 years' time, there's going to be big parties where people turn up just as the judge or my mother. In a green coat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With a violin case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well... Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Seen. Thank you, Hugh. Thank you, Lester, Susanna, and our friends at HBO for this incredible half hour with The Undoing. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.